guys, how's it going? Welcome back. Today we're looking at the PSA, I guess Freedom AR-15. Uh, this is built on a kit that I got from Palmetto, Palmetto State Armory. I bought the lower myself and then got the, again, the rest of it all to do a little test video on. And what we've done here today is compared this against two other really budget AR-15s. We've got the Ruger AR-556 right here. And we'll talk about some of the sort of um, changes that it's got on it, as well as the Smith & Wesson M&P 15 Sport, which has also been changed up a little bit. But these are definitely the right guns to compare this PSA against because this guy right here, again, with shipping and out the door, all put together, is something like 400 bucks, maybe 450. Not bad. And then these two guns in the five, $600 range. So definitely the right kind of comparison to do. So let's find out, how does the PSA do against some off the shelf, off the shelf quality AR-15s that are also definitely in that budget range? Is it just good enough or is it actually a pretty good contender? We're gonna shoot all these guns together and find out, stick around. Crockett, one of these guns belongs to you. Yes. That is? That is the Smith & Wesson. The MP15 Sport there. Yep. How do you like this as compared to the other guns? Um, I like it quite a bit. I mean, I'm a little partial just because it's mine. I've been shooting it, so I'm used to it from yeah. that perspective. Yeah. Uh, but uh, overall, I mean, they all shot well. There wasn't one of them that we were done shooting and I went, uh, let's go to the next one, you know. I mean, uh, they all shoot really well, especially given the prices. Yes. Now, if you were to compare that against uh, the PSA, did you notice anything really big, really different? Um, no, uh, quite similar, and I think a lot of it has to do with the... Uh, the, the Magpul furniture on Yeah. Um, so that made them feel very similar. Yeah. Uh, one of the diff one of the big differences I think here is you're not going to have a forward assist on the Smith and Wesson whereas you do on the PSA. Yeah. And that is something I would like. Uh, okay. It's not the end of the world to me, but I have had one particular experience where uh, we're out coyote, coyote hunting, me and my brother, and literally my beard was frozen. That's how cold it was. So it was single digits, uh, and this one jammed up on me. Is that right? So, I mean, I could still kind of stick my thumb in here and, and, and push and, and get it to go forward. I've done that before. But a forward assist, and I slam on that, I think, mm -hmm. would have helped that situation quite a bit. Yeah, I agree. Uh, so, aside from that, I mean, they're very similar components as far as triggers, as far as uh, the safety, as far as, um, you know, the bolt carrier group and, and so forth. A lot of the components are really similar, you know, the uh, it come, came with the exact same, basically the same uh, charging handle. They have the same front sight post. I mean, these, are, these two guns are very interchangeable. Mm. Uh, this one on your lower does have the integrated um, trigger guard, whereas this one has the Magpul trigger guard. So that's kind of worth noting. Um, and also, I would think, I believe that the Smith & Wesson, if you bring this side really close up to the camera, and just kind of show them the transitions between sort of the shapes on the upper and lower, maybe they can see it in yeah, really. high contrast there. But you've got sort of better, uh, better sort of transitions in, as far as you know the shape of the, the upper and lower is concerned uh, than you do with the PSA. But I'm not sure how much that even matters. The performance is really no difference. It all it's nice and tight. It all holds together really nice and. Um, I don't know, it performs great. I would say there is a big difference though, setting these two guns aside, or you know, setting these as one. If you compare them against the Ruger, there are actually some big differences um, as far as how Ruger put their gun together. And they, I would say that they've also got much better sort of transitions and shapes uh, as far as the matching of the upper and the lower is concerned on the Ruger, uh, kind of like the Smith & Wesson does. Um, but the obviously the Ruger here has a different handgun on it, a hand guard on it, and that was put on by uh, our friend Doc Tech Dad, that this mm. gun belongs to him. So he took off the original handguard and the original front sight, 
and you guys can look at my um, my initial video on the AR556 to see what all of that looked like in its original form. Uh, but the original, the initial grip that comes on this, I think is better than a lot of other ones because it's got the A2 angle to it, but it doesn't have that hump and it's pretty comfortable as compared to, you know, like a standard A2 grip. It's got sort of a very simple standard um, buttstock to it, which I don't mind, but I do prefer the Magpul. Um, and then again, the handguard has been swapped out, but it did come with kind of an, a different uh, ring up here that held that handguard on differently, as well as sort of the barrel nut was a little different, sort of like Ruger's own thing. So as far as the construction, as far as sort of the look and the um, overall performance of these two gun, of, of all these guns, I think I might like the Ruger slightly better than the other two. Uh, you were mentioning that it feels a little smooth. Yep, smoother. Yeah, I, I would agree. Um, shooting all three of them, I think the Ruger shoots just a, a little bit more smooth. Just a hair better. Yep. Um, as far as the uh, the sights and everything, I mean, it's just it's Ruger's flip-up sight and then a Magpul flip-up sight over here. But yeah, there was something about it that just felt a little bit smoother. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's something to do with the buffer weight or you know their. Um, you know, their uh, bolt carrier group. I don't know what it is exactly, but it does feel a little smoother as compared to the other two. Yeah. Um, so, of the three, I kind of like the Ruger better, but we have to mention the fact that this is maybe 150 bucks more. 100, 100 to 150 bucks more. So we got a lot of papers here, targets. We took all these guns out to 100 yards and we started at 25 yards to just make sure our zeros looked good. And then, um, you know, kind of dialed things in. But um, what I feel like is that, you know, it's, it's a little difficult to read these things well because the M&P 15 Sport has a red dot on it. Mm -hmm. For you and for me, that's a lot easier to sort of get that perfectly on target and uh, get a tighter group with it. So at 100 yards, the MP Sport, we had two different types of ammo that we tried to, we did these tests with. Um, one was Hornady um, Black 75 grain boat tail hollow point. And that one gave us a two inch group from the Smith & Wesson MP 15 Sport. So a two inch group was the best we could do on that one. And then the second type of ammo we did was, it's also a Botel hollow point and it's also a Hornady bullet, 68 grain. And that is the one and five eighths inch group from the Smith & Wesson M&P 15 Sport. So really good groups on that one, I think. You know, again, non-magnified at 100 yards. I think that's pretty good. Uh, we had Crockett doing all the 100 yard shooting. We kind of cycled between us for the 25 yard stuff. Here's the PSA. Again, we're just covering the accuracy portion of the experience at this point. PSA, three and five eighths inch. Again, unmagnified, no optic whatsoever. And this is with the 68 grain boat tail hollow points. Again, straight up iron sights. You know, a little high, but also a little wide. I don't know. Do you think that's fair for iron sights mm -hmm. rocket? Yeah, I think it is too, honestly. And then we got tighter on the 75 grains. We actually got a two and three quarter inch, once again, at 100 yards. And that's the 75 grain stuff. Why the sort of higher grain count on these 100 yard targets? Well, because these guns, I think they either have one and seven or one and eight twists. And everything I've read says heavier bullets do better in those one and seven, one and eight twists. One, one and nine, you know, the lighter weight stuff does better apparently, but that's what I've read anyhow. All right, so then we have the Ruger AR556, 168 grain, bow tail hollow points, giving us two and five eighths inch. Once again, that's iron sights. And then lastly, Again with the Ruger, three and five eighths inch. 
and that is the 175 grain Botel hollow point. So that's a look at the targets and the accuracy we were able to get with these three guns. How do they compare? Which one's best in your mind? I'm gonna leave that up to you guys. And again, you kind of have to take into account the fact that one of them did have a non-magnified red dot on it, uh, while the others were iron sights. So what I really think is, you know, interesting and kind of the big takeaway for me from this video is that the PSA at easily the, the lowest price point of all three of them um, just does really, really well. Not just for the price, but I think it stands toe to toe with any of these. Do you agree? Yeah, I do. And you're getting a lot of, at least with the uh, Smith and Wesson. Well, the the 2.0 version of the Smith and Wesson. Correct me if I'm wrong. Does it have the does it have the dust cover forward assist? I believe it has both. I know. I think it does. I think it does have both. So, from, but from the version one that I've got here, yeah, you're getting a lot more features on this versus the Smith & Wesson. Yeah, so if you're gonna get into a, uh, an MMP, it'll be, or the MMP Sport, it would be the 2.0, and it will be almost identical as far as features uh, to this guy right here. Um, as far as additional upgrades, would you recommend any additional upgrades to either this gun or any of the other two? I mean, obviously you put the Magpul furniture on yours, mm -hmm. you changed out the birdcage um, muzzle brake for the Wit machine uh, muzzle brake, like that thing? I do. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. It holds that gun really flat, so that's very cool. And this is a standard birdcage up here. Um, aside from that, I mean, you can put a red dot on there easily. You can put a scope on here easily. Collapse that if you want to and run a scope on it. In fact, I think I have run this with a scope briefly. Um, but, I mean, they run about the same as any other AR-15 would. Uh, any other thoughts on that? No, I, that's be, that would be the first thing I would put on it is either a red dot or a scope, depending on kind of what you wanted to do with it. Yeah. That would be the first thing I would do. And one of the coolest things about getting into a PSA is that you can kind of build it yourself. Mm. You know, you start with that lower, or I did anyway, and then you can get this whole build kit. The upper is all done for you, so you just slap that on. But then you build the entire lower yourself. Yes, you need to invest in some tools or borrow some tools, but that's a fun experience. Mm -hmm. You get to sort of see how it all goes together bit by bit, piece by piece. Uh, me and my son built this one together, and that was a lot of fun. And, we, and I have a second one, a mid-length actually, with so, sort of different furniture on it, and my other son and I built that one. So we've had some fun building these guns, and that's, you know, I think part of the experience as far as I'm concerned. I would agree. And I, and I think you'd get to understand and know the gun a lot better too. Which is a huge thing. Yeah. Um, there's also a lot to be said for buying a gun off the shelf and having it run really well. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't have to invest in those tools. You don't have to think about some of the problems. Um, uh, you know, some of the, I guess, pitfalls of putting it together or whatnot. You can just buy it off the shelf. It's a very good price and it runs really well. And that's true of the MP15 Sport as well as the Ruger AR556. So I'm not gonna pass a judgment for you guys, but I am gonna recommend this. If you guys are interested in, this, in these PSA guns and uh, they seem like they're good enough for your needs, do follow me over on my Facebook page because I frequently post deals from Palmetto State Armory to lowers, to build kits, to uppers, to all kinds of stuff. They've got fantastic deals all the time. And uh, again, I post deals over on Facebook constantly. I can't post any of those deals here on Facebook or on, on YouTube because of their new policies where you basically get a channel strike if you post a link to any kind of a uh, gun, <laughs> gun thing that you can buy. It's kind of weird, but whatever. So do follow me on Facebook if you're into that. All right, I almost went on a tirade, but I'll, I won't. We'll save the tirades. All right, guys, thanks for watching. That is the Palmetto State Armory build. Again, I've got a couple of them right now, and they both function fantastic. I highly recommend them. I'm Light Boy Scout, here with Crockett 20. See you guys later.